Taney is spearheading a groundbreaking project with SUNY Plattsburgh and the Adirondack History Center Museum to showcase folk music from the Adirondacks. They're also teaming up with us here at Mountain Lake PBS to produce a documentary on the work of a historian and folklorist, Marjorie Lansing Porter, who made it her mission to preserve generations of folk songs from across the Adirondacks. They filled up their bottles and swore solemnly that that very day they would go on a spree and sing Paul the Golani, right Paul the Golani, sing Paul the Golani, right Paul the Golani. Hi, I'm Paul Larson, the producer of a new documentary that celebrates the past and unites it with the present in a fresh and exciting way. It's called Songs to Keep, Treasures of an Adirondack Folk Collector. The film is about a unique collection of folk music from the 19th and 20th centuries that's being celebrated for the first time in the 21st century by folk artists who are re-recording these treasures. In the days of old, in the days of gold, how often I repine for the days of old when we dug up the gold in the days of 40. Many of these songs circulated throughout the United States in various forms, and a journalist and folklorist from upstate New York named Marjorie Lansing Porter made it her mission to capture as many songs as she could. If it wasn't for Marjorie Lansing Porter, many of our folk songs would have been lost. Really, she didn't let time or money or weather slow her down. She just forged ahead to get these songs. I learned so much from her. What an amazing woman she was, that she was a pioneer and courageous and, and uh, multifaceted. The ballads were sung in the beautiful Adirondack region of New York State, but the stories they tell are universally appealing. Songs that help shape our nation with stories about wild nights in a bar, tunes sung by miners, and lumber camp songs. The value of folk music to me in my life is that I was exposed to something that was created by people who were living their lives and needed to tell their story or share their story. So there's an honesty to it. Now we're capturing modern day folk singers in the recording studio and out in nature as they celebrate this collection of tunes. One duo you might recognize, the Bacon Brothers, Kevin and Michael, who enjoy spending summer months in the Adirondacks. I learned to drink and gamble, turned out to be a bum. I'm tired of roaming around and I'm going to be back home. There's a path that leads back to my Adirondack home. I'm going back tonight and I never more will roam. I can see my mother there for her boy. She says a prayer and she waits in her armchair in my Adirondack home. There's just no place like it on earth. It's just spectacularly beautiful. Here's this pristine kind of wilderness, natural lakes, mountains, and wildlife. And it's, it's just beautiful. Another thing that's so special about this project is it's more than just a film. We're creating a songbook, a CD, and later this summer, there's even a concert tour. And Paul Larson, our colleague at Mountain Lake PBS, is here with us now. Nice to have you. Thanks. So why the decision to make this documentary? Well, it's happening right now because there is a CD being produced right now, and it's spearheaded by Tawny Traditional Arts of Upstate New York. They came up with the idea along with some other organizations. They've been wanting to do this for years. They came up with this idea to have contemporary folk artists record these old songs. So they had these contemporary artists listen to these scratchy old recordings because Marjorie Lansing Porter collected these songs and recorded them on a sound scriber, a very primitive recording device. And for years they existed on wax discs. And now SUNY Plattsburgh and some other organizations helped digitize the recordings. So these artists were able to listen to the old recordings and now they're putting their own spin on them. They're putting instruments behind songs that were only sung a cappella before and they're just putting their own little flavor into them. Uh, who are some of the folk singers involved in the project? Well these are people who have made a name for themselves as Adirondack folk singers. Dan Berggren, Celia Evans, Dave Ruck, Lee Knight are involved in the project and we also wanted to get some nationally known people in this project, in the documentary, and on the CD. 
So I approached Peter Yarrow and Noel Paul Stuckey of Peter, Paul, and Mary, and we went to Manhattan and interviewed them. They were very insightful about this kind of music that we're talking about. And also, I asked the Bacon Brothers, with whom we've worked last year, to record a song for the CD. Now, Michael and Kevin Bacon, they love the Adirondacks. They have a cabin here. They've come up every year almost, and they go back all the way to their grandparents in terms of their family history, having a cabin in the Adirondacks. And their song is appropriately titled, My Adirondack Home. And what kinds of songs are, are in, the, uh, in the collection? Well, we have contemporary folk music, but this is not what we're talking about. We're talking about traditional folk songs. These are songs sung by lumberjacks, coal miners, trappers in the Adirondacks in the past century and before. They're singing about their way of life. So really, it's history and song. What's special about the Adirondacks in terms of the, the folk music that it inspires? Well, I was just asking that question to a young singer named Alex Smith yesterday, and he came up with such a great response. He said, two of the things that can inspire great music are beauty and hardship, and the Adirondacks has both. It has the wondrous beauty of the outdoors and the history of the hardship of the lumbers, the trappers, the coal miners who lived these very hard lives while they were working in the Adirondacks in the past two centuries. And that's what inspires these particular songs. Also, the songs in this collection have a universal appeal. They're not just limited to this region. They're talking about issues that help develop the country of the United States of America as well as Canada. So it's really all over North America. We also have some French Canadian songs in the collection. And I understand that you're looking for some funding for this project. Yes, and we have a page on kickstarter.com and you can learn all about the project and you can look it up at songs to keep on kickstarter.com and that will tell you about the different offers we have. We're offering the Blu-ray, the DVD, the CD at various pledge levels. So look for songs to keep treasures from an Adirondack folk collector premiering later this fall here on Mountain Lake PBS. Paul Larson, thank you very much for taking the time to talk with us. It's been a pleasure. There's a lot to look forward to with this project. That documentary, Songs to Keep Treasures from an Adirondack Folk Collector, will premiere later this fall here on Mountain Lake PBS. Fifteen songs from the Porter Collection are being re-recorded for a CD that's being released in August. And then later in the month, a series of concerts will be presented across the North Country, featuring some of the region's favorite musicians, with performances in Lake Placid and Old Forge, and then more concerts scheduled for September in St. Lawrence County, Elizabethtown, and Plattsburgh. For a full schedule of concerts and tickets, you can go to mountainlake.org, where you'll also find more information on how you can help with the production of the documentary. This young man's name was Brennan. His age was 23. His parents lived in Mineville and raised him tenderly.